With the latest version of the Raspberry Pi single board computer, the Raspberry Pi 4, having come out last month in June of 2019, I wanted to make a video to take you all the way from unboxing it to running an operating system and doing any computer task that you want. Alright, let's do this! For this video, I'm going to be using the very popular Kana kit for the Raspberry Pi 4. It includes the Raspberry Pi 4, a USB-C power supply, an adapter switch where I can plug in the power supply and use a button to turn the Raspberry Pi on and off, a micro HDMI cable to connect the Pi to an HDMI monitor, a 32 gig micro SD card, and a little adapter that allows me to connect it to my computer, a couple of accessories, a USB keyboard with a built-in touchpad, and as an option, a line speaker. The last thing I'll need is a USB SD card adapter as my computer doesn't have a built-in one. I'll quickly take out everything out of the box. And once I'm done, I'll plug in the microSD card into its adapter and then using the USB adapter, I'll connect it to a USB port in my computer. From the Raspberry Pi website, I can go to the download section and I'll see two different options for operating systems. Noobs allows you to try a few different options, but since we know we're going to use Raspbian, I'll go ahead and use that. As usual, I invite you to experiment and try them all to see which one you like more. From the three Raspbian options, I'll choose the one with the desktop environment and the recommended software. Instead of the zip file, I'll use the torrent, which I found to be a lot quicker. After the download completes, I'll go ahead and open the terminal, as I usually do for completing the task of flashing the downloaded image onto the SD card. I'll start by unzipping the file, then using the diskutil built-in command line tool, I'll list the different disks that are available to the operating system. As I know the SD card is named no name, I recognize that it's the last device that's listed. I'll need to grab the name that the operating system gave it, which is disk2. Please note that it might be different in your case. So if you don't know which one it is, you can remove it, list everything available, plug it back in, list it again, and see what the difference between the two lists are, and determine which one it is. With the name of the disk, I can go ahead and use the disk util to unmount it to flash the image onto the SD card. The parameters that I need is the location of the input file and the destination of the output disk which we determine in my case to be disk 2. I'll also use a block size of 1 megabyte, but since it's a 32 gig card, it'll take a long time. You can use a bigger block size like 2 megs or 4 megs and it'll be just fine. After about an hour, in my case, I'll go ahead and eject the SD card with the newly flashed image. I'll go ahead and insert the micro SD card into the adapter on the bottom side of the Raspberry Pi, connect the adapter of the USB keyboard, and I'll use the 2.0 USB ports, which are black and on the outside of the board. The blue ones are USB 3 ports, so if your peripherals can take advantage, then go ahead and use those. I'll then connect the micro HDMI cable from the monitor and the 5 volt USB-C power supply with the little adapter switch. And immediately I should see a big colored square 
that indicates that the system is booting up. After a couple of minutes, I should see the desktop environment in its full glory. Because this is the first time I'm booting into it, I'll be asked to configure a few options. I'll select United States for the country, English for the language, and Los Angeles for the time zone. I'll also click on using a US keyboard and the English language. And for the password, I'll use the default one, which is Raspberry, but I encourage you to change it. I'll then select my Wi-Fi network and enter the corresponding password and allow the system to install the latest updates. With that done, I'll go ahead and click restart. And once it boots back up again, I'm ready to start using the Raspbian Linux-based operating system. As we chose the Raspbian option with the install recommended software, if I go to the start menu, I can see all the different applications that are ready for me to use. We'll be using a lot of them in other videos, but for now, I'll go ahead and open up the browser. And if I navigate to YouTube, to my favorite channel, I can see that it's ready for watching more videos. So there you have it. Really quickly, we've learned how to take the Raspberry Pi 4 all the way from the inside of a box to running the Raspbian operating system. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.